What is going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another reaction today we have a reaction to Seth once again today we are checking out his star sector review so yeah this was actually a suggestion left in the comments of one of the other Seth videos and someone said they would like to see this I believe a few people said they would like to see this one I put it up to the twitch chat we had like a vote between two and they picked this one so yeah hope you guys enjoy this reaction like I say every time, if you want to be involved with these reactions live, you can go to the Twitch. And if you want to be updated on every time a video or a Twitch stream goes live, you can join my Discord. And yeah, of course, if you have any suggestions, comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoy this reaction. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's go. Alright, Star Sector Review. Explore the cosmos and everything. Alright. Good old Seth. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Star Sector is an open-world space strategy game about selling heroin and illegally harvested kidneys on the black market, making money off misery, disruption, and political yep. unrest, and Sounds ambushing right. trade convoys in deep space just to watch a planet descend into chaos. I've been playing this game on and off for years now. <laughs> it's amazing, yet I don't hear many people talk about it. Star Sector is a massive project done entirely by four people, and it's... Wait, who? About Did it. he say? Star Sector is a massive project done in Vsauce Michael Professor X by four Travoldius Theodore the s What? The seventh and <laughs> Zoltan Chive the the Witcher What? <laughs> I never played Star Sector, it looks dope, but I'm too stupid for it. Someone commented on uh, one of the other videos about uh, the uh, the uh, what was the one inside the spaceship called Space Station Thirteen? Someone commented on that one, right? This is Among Us for people with a big brain, you know. Yeah, and I was like, damn, guess I'll stick to Among Us, <laughs> which I haven't played in. in for people and it's had updates for about nine years now each one getting closer to their dream goal of simulating a living breathing galaxy Pretty story cool. okay nobody gives a shit so i'm gonna be quick right so in star sector humanity figured out faster than light travel we colonized Fog. thousands of worlds spanning hundreds of galaxies using the relays from mass effect which were the only practical way of crossing galaxies they were the only practical way until suddenly nobody he knows exactly why all the gate systems went dead we could no longer reach the rest of humanity this event is referred to as the collapse and marks the end of the prosperous domain era in an isolated galaxy 206 cycles after the collapse our story takes place common humanity has been replaced with ambition sounds like and warhammer <laughs> our future is bleak and we don't know what tomorrow might hold for us welcome to star sector basically everything's a piece of shit we're in the galactic nice. version of the dark ages but it's super fun nobody remembers how to make anything anymore mainly because of drm and copyright laws i'm not kidding mm -hmm. that is the actual in-game reason we can't get all copyright laws dude machinery because all the corporations put copy protection on their design chips anyway in the chaos that followed everybody broke off into their own respective factions and keep dick waving each other but ultimately nobody can consolidate enough power to wipe out or unify the company can't have However, shit in space account for one facts fact. you dude. thrown into the space sandbox you begin as nothing but a pilot with a small fleet insignificant in a scale of things but given time practice and some high level maneuvers you could be the one person to unite the sector or mm. reduce it to the Stone Age. <laughs> Every faction is unique in their motivations, and in general, I bet I can tell you right now he reduced it to the Stone Age. Days to be nice to them. That is, if they can be reasoned with. In no particular order, these are the hegemony, which represent the combined remains of law and order from the Domain <laughs> Era, the Persian League, which said fuck taxes and broke off from the hegemony, nice. the Sindrian Diktat, a military dictatorship which also oh, said God. fuck taxes and broke off from the hegemony, Tri Corporation, Ow. which represents the R&D business interest of Tritachion Incorporated, 
the mega corporation responsible for pioneering unregulated AI technology. <laughs> Conversely, there's the Luddick Church, who Good are AI. humans that believe the collapse was God's punishment for of molesting course, the dude. stars, and that artificial intelligence is literally electronic Satan. These are considered <sighs> the moderates. Then there's the Luddick. There's always religion mixed into everything, isn't there? One thing I was going to say, isn't that a problem with these games that they want an infinite universe where you can never really make one? What's going path, on? Now, a sect of fundamentalist space jihadists that believe the answer to man's technological hubris is rampant terrorism. Everyone nice. hates the Luddick path, and the Luddick path hates everyone. And finally, pirates. These are yeah, we're going to get new emotes, boys. Don't worry. With their ideology. You have stuff I want. So I'm going to get some new ones. You, or you don't. I'm going to Fuck kill you the anyway shovel, for dude. the hell of it. Your relations and interactions with each of these factions will determine the fate of the galaxy. Anyway, gameplay. Everything's a wreck, tensions are high, but most of all, there's profit to be made. Mostly everything in Star Sector revolves around money or credits. These Sounds are effectively right. space bitcoins and are universally accepted everywhere. Most of your time, as with real life, will be spent figuring out how to make as much money as possible. You can see why I love this game. It runs in my blood. Your starting fleet is very <laughs> you can't really fight most enemies, but you are fast and burn very little fuel to get around. The only means of interstellar travel in Star Sector is by diving into hyperspace and burning through metric tons of antimatter fuel to reach distant stars. So the oh, size wait. and composition of your fleet is important for fuel economy. You should always watch your fuel tanks and pray you never run dry while Weapons. in the middle of deep space. Because once you go dry, your fleet will be pulled into the nearest ground gravity well which nice. if you're unlucky might be a red giant if you're <laughs> very unlucky a black, black hole. hole so at the start i recommend you do planetary surveys and exploration contracts these this don't require long much investment fuck. just patience and nerves of steel sometimes while exploring deep space you might hear distress signals uh we ignore those just i was gonna say what happens if you don't find uh, like a planet or some shit. Yeah, and distress signals don't go to them. I learned from Guardians of the Galaxy that the distress signals are what the pirates trigger so they can rob other ships. Ignore them. Contracts are offered to you by intel frequencies from different factions, <laughs> businesses, and planet administrators. How close you are to the nearest communications relay will decide how quickly you hear about it, since transmissions travel in real time. You should generally be very quick about grabbing these. Space is busy, and contracts can be withdrawn or taken by somebody else without notice. With Oof. money to spare, you can go ahead and actually invest into your own ships. And let me tell you, there's a lot of ships to choose from. With different roles, specifications, and hull sizes. This ranges from the smallest frigates to capital class ships, which take up most of the screen. It doesn't end there. Every ship can be modified, outfitted, and equipped with weapons that looks like a, to the type and size of a one of those Star Wars ones. Crazy setups. You can even make huge modifications to the hull to completely change your ship's behavior. For example, let's say you want your cruiser to act as a makeshift carrier. You can convert their cargo bays to accommodate fighter squadrons instead. Some factions also cook up their own modifications. Pirates don't have top-of-the-line equipment, so they improvise. For this reason, the Pirates Capital Class ship is a stolen cargo frayer ripped apart and stitched Donut together steel. with as many guns as they could possibly hold. The Luddick Path follows the same philosophy of DIY hull mods, but they don't care about coming back alive, so they take captured fuel ships, override the safety settings, and, oh, and use them as a bomb. Gigantic battering oh. ram, and it's absolutely terrifying when you realize it's burning towards you <laughs> at full speed. The amount there of customization go. is insane, and you can do this for every single ship in your fleet. This game looks hella complicated, dude. With your fleet responding to orders to the best of their ability, they're actually quite good until you get a reckless Ligma. officer who decides that the best defense is a good offensive ramming maneuver. However, nice. you pilot your flagship directly. It takes some getting used to. Every ship generates flux 
effects whenever they shoot or absorb damage, oh, so God. you'll have to manage or vent the extra flux into space to avoid overloading your system and leaving yourself open to attack. The same goes for enemies. As if all of this wasn't already too much to take in, every ship type has unique specializations. Oh, for example, God, space dude. class ships can't use shields. Instead, they can do this, which moves the ship safely into an alternative dimension where time nice, flows dude. much faster. Can Combined go into the nether realm. Favorite ship in the game, the star sector equivalent of Killer Queen, and you've got a ship that can turn anything into a bomb while hiding inside another dimension. I don't nice. have to explain shit. It just this game looks too complicated for me already. I I don't know. People have so much time to learn these weird games. I I just don't have the the patience. It does not. It does, but I like No Man's Sky. We watched a video on that on the old YouTube channel. The internet historian one. I played this completely failed in combat. Yeah, I would too. He actually gives you a free game code. Wait, I can get a free game code to play this shit. Works. Combat is amazing once you figure it out. It's simultaneously the hardest and most satisfying component of the game. <laughs> Luckily, your capital is not at risk. All planetary stations offer combat simulations to test your design. SCP Containment However, you'll need a lot more money to get to that point. So <laughs> We played SCP Containment Breach twice. And it just didn't end very good. You'll need to work with the game's economic system. Yes, this game has a real-time economy. Every colony produces, demands, and consumes different resources, and needs a constant stream of trade traffic to stay functional. The resources needed depend on the industry. For example, mining. Mining is very mining. depressing. So miners consume a lot yeah. of heroin to <laughs> okay, the pain dude. of being a miner. <laughs> trade five output. Yeah, I cannot do in game trades i suck at it demand. like i always have on every game i've about to trade in the game you can pull up the entire market data see consumers producers Holy market shit, shares dude. and relative prices across the sector but making a profit isn't that easy the yeah. open market is subject to a massive trade tariff of 30 percent which can quickly cut into your margins so we don't trade on the open market oh we there's a black, the market. black market perfect so dude planet to planet completely sidestep paying taxes there you go you deal in highly illegal contraband like combat mechs ai cores harvested yep. organs and every drug you can think of however Hog the champ, life of dude. a smuggler isn't that easy smuggle too much and your suspicion level increases which means patrol fleets are more likely to do random stop searches right. sometimes they find nothing sometimes they find all of your contraband destroy nice. it and hurt prison. your reputation yeah. i still remember the moment i was amazed by this game there's no prison time in this by game. a random patrol, so I thought, hey, let's just eject all of my drugs out of oh, the yeah. space. So Good they idea. Stop searched. They found nothing, as expected. Then the patrol officer said, hey, you're all clean. And by the way, we scanned some cargo pods floating around nearby, and you know what? They're filled with illegal shit, <laughs> but it's not yours, right? So we'll just confiscate these and destroy them. This game thinks of everything. So to smuggle nice one, let dude. me teach you the tricks of a trade, which can Conveniently, are the same tools. You well, there's only one trick, dude, and you know what that trick is. You've seen Rick and Morty episode one, season one. Yeah. You'll use for navigating. Runescape. Number one. That's true too. Space. Runescape. Has if to you can trade on there. On. This is your fleet identification. It's a good point to go without it, but it makes it very obvious when you're doing shady business. The detection range of your fleet depends on your surroundings. A nearby asteroid field is <laughs> the perfect place to hide. Like Once inside, we too. kill our transponder and go dark. <laughs> Going dark means running engines on minimal power, which reduces your heat signature and makes you very hard hard to detect. Doing this, we quietly approach planets and do business anonymously, so the authorities can't trace it back to us. Number two, if you get jumped by patrols or spotted, hit the emergency burn and outrun them. If there they're it too is. close, there's a chance they'll try and fire off an interdiction, which temporarily fries your burn drives. If this happens, you're screwed. But <laughs> we've got another trick up our sleeves. Number Trading three, on the web app. Jumping. The Mo most essential oh, skill no. you can learn as a fleet commander, which lets you jump 
right into hyperspace without using a jump point. It's highly illegal, it takes a while to charge, but it lets you dab on patrols before they can reach you. With all of these Yikes. tools, you should be able to make fat stacks of cash. Now, nice. Of course, regular smuggling is fine and dandy, but the big profits are taken from trade contracts, as they often pay several times the market value, provided you can deliver on time. Or just hang around the local bar. At the end of the day, it turns out the best vehicle for human <laughs> business Mental is alcohol. Egg. This game is constant management, planning, and calculation. Sometimes things don't go as planned or get thrown off by factors outside your control. But these can also be exploited for your own gain. Let's say a system has been targeted by pirates. Smuggling is rampant. Trade convoys are going missing. This is terrible. However, it's also terribly profitable for you. The more desperate a system gets, the cheaper they'll sell their exports and the higher they'll pay for imports to stabilize the market. Nice. You can even go one step further. Why not take advantage of a trade surplus, buy off the excess, and smuggle them back to the pirates? Pirates have mm. terrible trade routes and will gladly pay good money for marines, mechs, and narcotics. Of War course they would, dude. Is just business after all. In this <laughs> yeah. morality, it's kind of true though. Pay. Opportunistic pragmatism does. When your business relations sours or ceases to be profitable, offer to take the bounty contract for that same group of pirates. You see, that is five head right there. When they don't want to trade with you, just murder them. I like blast that. Blast their station into orbit and receive even more money and praise from the faction that posted the contract. You'll come back a celebrated hero, and lower-ranking officials will generally stay out of your way. You're a smuggler, you're doing illegal shit, but you're also helping us out. So, we'll turn a blind eye for now. You can also do the same for the Luddock Path. Who knew that arming radical space terrorists could be so <laughs> profitable? This yeah. This is amazing. And with Who knew, dude? Update, you can go even further. With so much wealth and power why not start exploring the far sectors of space oh, it's God. mostly filled with dead rocks and all sorts of natural and unnatural cosmic horrors so how neutron stars big is black the... holes and even worse the wreck the what that isn't gonna give anyone a fucking seizure dude but somewhere in all that chaos, you might get lucky. You might find a planet that's actually good, not too much. Terran like world. Earth. So you run a survey, send an expedition, and hey, what do you know? It is a damn good planet. So why not colonize it? Start your own colony. Jerusalem. Own <laughs> Invest back into the colony. Attract more people and grow the population. Build heavy batteries, orbital battle stations, and patrols to secure your domain. Expand. Expand aggressively. Announce that your state is now an open port. Profit how from your own black infinite market. Map. Start an organ harvesting operation. Take so much of the illegally harvested organ market <laughs> share that other factions get jealous and try to fuck you over with red tape, bureaucracy, and trade disruptions to prevent you from getting ahead. Subvert their plans by bribing their commanders. Become an industrial powerhouse. Get targeted by pirates for being too prosperous. Get targeted by the space jihad for being too industrial. <laughs> Hegemony because they realize why you're so successful because your colony isn't run by humans No, all this time your colony has been run by an alpha core an artificial intelligence that oh, overshadows no. the decision-making abilities of any human in star sector using an AI is completely illegal using an alpha level AI is extremely fucking illegal. But as long as you <laughs> keep bribing their military, they can't do anything. Eventually, decide that having an AI isn't worth the trouble. Try and pull it out. But you can't, because it's missing. <laughs> nice. It's gone, dude. Just like Ultron. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Realize that the AI already anticipated this. Get blackmailed by your own AI, who threatens to tell every faction in the sector that you've been using AI technology if you try and disconnect him. <laughs> so they'll just blow us up anyway. Plunge your empire into total war. Raid the other factions and steal their copyright protected blueprints. Watch <laughs> them get obliterated by their own ship designs. Cripple their military. Propose a ceasefire. Receive no reply. Order a saturation bombardment on every core world. Condemn millions to their death. <laughs> there you go, dude. And throw them into the sun. And consider what you've done. 
Then, put one final bullet in the chamber. Hold the barrel against your temple and shoot. Nice. Star Sector. It's a lot of fun. Surely, Seth, there's nothing more to say, and you've covered everything. Wrong. This game also has its own active modding scene, which of adds course. dozens of new ships, weapons, and factions into the mix. There's even mods which merge them all together, letting new factions trade and interact with the rest. After finishing the base game, mods can keep you entertained with an entirely new game altogether. Sometimes the developers even incorporate mods into the main code if they're that good. Oh yeah, this game also works on Mac and Linux. This is probably Probably one of the best Imagine gaming on a Mac. And it only cost me 15 bucks. They make mm. you use some old ass website from the 2000s to get <laughs> your CD key and download link. But hey, it works. I can't really complain about something I've played for several hundred hours, nor something that keeps getting updates yearly. My only criticism is that chasing enemies or getting into a fight can take a long time if you're flying the larger ships. But again, this is something I fixed with a single mod. In an industry where you're piled on constantly with mediocrity, garbage, and bloated design. Yeah, this blow. is something put out by a few guys that puts triple A studios. <laughs> FIFA. I give it a good shot. I'm completely biased and I don't care. Star Sector is a beautiful game and I thoroughly recommend it. What go is going on there, dude? If you're not sure? Go try it. Here's my actual CD key. Fucking Download space below, fucking hammer, dude. Smack it in there. Enjoy. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thanks to the many members of Emerge. Merchants Guild, generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. All right, roll the you know, That's funny how, like, he just destroyed the entire fucking universe and then killed himself. That, that shit was hilarious. I guess that's how this game ends. Probably not going to play the game. I'd say it was fun. It was fun.